Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in unit 5, lesson 11, we're looking at part 8. It says that this app lets users look up the air quality index statistics from their state. It says read and run the code to understand how it works. Using the watcher could be a useful tool to see what's going on in the background. Add code to the program where the comments indicate to calculate the percent of each type of day from the selected state when the user clicks the display button. Display each percentage in the appropriate output label. And it says test your program in a few different states to make sure that it works. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up the watcher. And the one that I'm going to look at is the filter days with AQI list. We'll go ahead and collapse the instructions so that we can see more of the code. So let's take a peek at what's going on. Immediately what's going on is we're creating a list of variables and we're going to a table to get information from different columns within the same table. Let's go ahead and look and see what that is. I'm gonna click on this air quality index by US County. Within this table, I can see states and I can see counties. Then I see different days with AQI, and it's different for each of the counties. And we have good days, moderate days, and so on. And we're going to use these numbers to calculate each state's percentage for this app. So once we've gotten that information, we create a new set of variables. And what we're doing is just creating a list that we can filter this data into. By default, it's set empty. As we scroll through here, we can see an on event for a change in the state dropdown. So as we select different states, the first thing that's going to happen is that it's gonna clear out those filtered variables that we have above in the event that it has some data stored from a previous session. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new variable for our state selection. So whatever's selected here is pulled and then it's added to this variable. Then we have a for loop running. The for loop by default is i equals zero and it's going to look at that variable number and compare it to the state list. Our state list is that first variable that was created. So it's gonna run through that entire list at the variable. And each time this runs through, it's gonna add one to the variable until that I variable is no longer less than that list. As it's running through this list, we have here a variable called state, and it's gonna be populated with each of the index entries in that state list. As that's being populated, it's going to compare to see is the state selected the same as the state that was pulled from that list. If it's the same, what it's going to do is it's going to append all of those lists at the top and it's going to populate that list with a number for that index. And it's going to run through this as many times as that matches. And then if it doesn't match, it's just going to move on to the next index until every index is compared. Then we have this, the display button, and it's on click, and it's this button right here. When that's clicked, we have a new set of variables that are created. By default, they're all set to zero. Then we have another for loop where I is being compared again with the list of the filtered days with AQI, and it's gonna compare that index. As long as that number is less than, it's gonna run through this entire for loop. Each time it runs through, it's gonna add one to that variable until again, this variable is no longer less than the list length. Each time that it runs through, we have a set of variables and each one of these variables is a calculation. So again, by default, it's zero, but each index is then added to that zero and then all of the other index entries until we get a total for everything within that state for each of these categories. We're going to have to create code to make a percentage that eventually outputs to here. And then we have some on click events. These on clicks are for this section right here. If you click this, it takes you to a different screen. And then within that screen, there's a back button. Let's go ahead and run the app just to see what populates. If you saw when I clicked on that table earlier, it's a little slow to want to load that information. And I'll be honest with you, I tested this part of the lesson before I decided to record a video and it actually caused me some issues with that delayed loading. And so that might affect us as we run through. But as I made a couple of selections, we do see that eventually that table was loaded and we can see different indexes here. I'm just going to reset the app 
And then what we'll do is we'll start making the calculations. It's just good to know that the table did load based upon the code that was already created. What we're going to do is we're going to create six different variables and we're going to make some calculations within those variables. So let's go to the variables tab and we're going to do this one, declare a variable. For the remainder of this video, I'm actually going to start doing repeated commands together instead of just doing one variable at a time. You might not want to do that. I'm going to mimic the name that's up here, but instead of total, I'm going to call it percentage. And we're going to start with good days and work our way through this list. I want to caution you, there's a lot of text to be typed here, and it's going to be very easy for you to make small errors when typing. So just be cautious as you do this. After typing all those, hopefully I didn't make a mistake. For each of these variables, I said we were going to make a calculation. So let's go to the math section. I don't believe we've used the math round yet within our lessons so far, but we're going to use it here. Simply all it does is it takes our calculation and it either rounds it up or down based upon the numbers. Within this, we're going to do two calculations. We're going to do division and we're going to do multiplication. As that happened, it put parentheses around my multiplication. Honestly, it doesn't really matter for these calculations, but I'm going to delete it out. You should note that as you make calculations, that order of operations is important. It might do a calculation that you didn't want yet. We're going to do this variable right here, total good days. And we're going to divide it by total days with AQI. And then we need to multiply that by 100. And I meant to already show you this, but I didn't. I went ahead and I downloaded that table to Excel. And this might help you visualize what we're doing. So we have all of our counties here within Alabama. We have days with AQI. We have good days, moderate days, etc. This number right here is just a simple sum of this column. This one does the same thing for the good days. This calculation here is good days divided by days with AQI. It also is multiplied by 100, which we're about to do. This one is that same calculation except for moderate days divided by days with AQI, but this one is not multiplied by 100. The reason for the multiplication is so that we get that full percentage in our calculation and our number should match. And of course we did rounding, so these might vary just a little bit, but that round will either push the number up or push it down. For the remainder of these variables, this is going to be almost identical with the exception of the numerator being different for each of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click show text. I'm going to do a little bit of cheating. I'm going to copy these for each of these. This saves me a lot of typing, a lot of possibility for mistake. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to change each of the numerators like I said before. So. The first one we'll do is total moderate days. And we can check that here, percentage moderate days, to make sure that that matches. And that was just a lot faster than having to type out everything and carry all of those blocks of code in. You should do what you feel comfortable with, though. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't do it. The last thing that we need to do is set our text for each of these six sections. So let's go to the UI controls. And we're going to do set text. Our IDs are going to be each of these. Now we see the title here, good days. Each one of these is the title plus output. The only thing you should be cautious of is we have unhealthy days here, but this is for groups. This one's just unhealthy days. And we're going to see two different variations of the output. What we're going to put in the second part of set text is our different variables that we created because we want that calculation to display there. I'm just going to copy and paste this information in. And of course, if you just want to eyeball these, these should have similar names. All right, now that we've done that, let's go in and run the app.
And as I click around the different states, I'm waiting for this watcher to start to populate. If you're on a slow connection or maybe their website's a little bit bogged down, it might be a little bit slow to output those numbers. But now that we've done that, we should be able to display the results. And we can see here 93% if we compare it with our Excel sheet. It was 92.5 and it used that math round to round up. Those numbers look good. Let me go ahead and show you what would have happened had we not used math round. We'll go ahead and reset this and wait for the watcher. All right, now that that's going, let's go ahead and click calculate. We can see here that our number is 7.49185%. That just allows you to see the difference between math round and not using math round. There's really a lot of moving pieces within this app. And at first glance, it could be confusing. You should definitely take a moment just to kind of outline the code and see what's going on before you begin jumping into writing the different math portions. And then the math portions of this app can be a little bit difficult too if math might not be your strong suit. If for some reason you've run through this, you don't exactly feel comfortable with what we did, I would encourage you to go and click the version history, reset it to its default, and then rebuild this app just until you feel comfortable using these pieces. But when you're done, go ahead and click finish.